Good morning, it's Friday. Cammy's over doing cellar callers today. We are back over rugby. Just come over to see Rich, see the progress so far. There he is, hopping up there. Never very talkative, Rich. <laughs> uh, we've got the sweep going in here. That's where the main DBs go in. And then there's obviously going to be kitchen area coming all the way around here with all the appliances in a little U-shape returning over there. So we've still got that, all that to get in for the power. Can't do that until the kitchen comes in, but the tray is looking pretty good. The aircon guy's been in. Mark's come in and put all the units up. We've just done a few extra sets on the trays right over here as well. Which is a good job on that. And then today, we're just trying to get as much of them as we can because uh, we've got a free house here today. There's no one else in our way. So we've got the speakers for the sound system we're going to be putting in. We've got two subs and eight speakers. That's inside here. We'll show you that in a minute. And then we're going to uh, start working out where everything's going to go. And then we're going to start planning on get the cables in for that, do as much as we can before uh, before we get the kitchen in and we can carry on doing the other work. So yeah, we'll catch you in a little bit and uh, see you later. Okay, just thought I'd show you a bit about how we put uh, sound systems together. We just put in a background system in this restaurant. Uh, it's gonna be background, a bit of foreground. We've specced it up quite well. We're gonna be using uh, two subs and four speakers. So these are quite cool little, quite cool little system. Uh, if you don't know how it works with the when it comes to like your amplification and speakers, uh, when, we're not using a 100 volt line. A 100 volt line is for running long distances, so you don't get any uh, to get around your, your your volt drop in your cables and your resistance to the cables. You can have multiple speakers on a 100 volt line; it keeps going and going and going. It's not as loud. Sound quality can't be quite as good, but it's a way around it. You often find that in uh, supermarkets and all that sort of thing when they've got a lot of speakers for announcements. However, this system can do a 100 volt line if we want it to, but we're not going to be sending it to that. We're going to be using it on a normal uh, normal passive system with the normal ohms, so we're going to be running eight ohms. How this all works is we basically want to send the bass frequencies to the sub, obviously, and only the uh, mid and high frequencies to these little tops. Now, to get around it, to make it nice and simple, on a big install, if you're doing like a bar or a nightclub, you would have a, like an amplifier, then you'd have what you call like a crossover or a drive rack. That separates the frequencies to each sort of speaker. So you've got your sub and then your high level speakers, which are your mid highs for your vocals and all your treble and that sort of thing. So to make it easier for us on here, we're gonna be using a, uh, a four zone amplifier. That means it gives us four channels out the back. Each one's gonna have its bass, mid and treble and we can select different sources. So we could have like a, a CD player or a USB or use the built-in integrated player here or Bluetooth and you can separate it out. So this is quite good if you wanted to have, say for example, in a pub, you could have a, like a football match playing on the TVs in one end of the pub and then you can just have the background music on that sort of thing. Uh, now, how are we gonna wire it? We're gonna come straight out of here into the first speaker, the first sub, because it's actually got crossover built in. And each one of these represents an output. So we've got left and right input from the amplifier. And then we've got the satellite outs, which are the little speakers. So they're gonna come out of there. And then that way, this will all be one zone with four of these speakers, one of them. And we're gonna mount that in the central area here, all around the tray, like that, with the sub probably up on the wall out of the way there. And that will do this one zone. This will be around the kitchen, and then around the restaurant area in the corners where the seat's gonna be. We're gonna have another system with another sub probably up here. And then there's four speakers dotted around the tray, pointing in different directions. So that's going to give us a broad spread of music and audio. You'll be able to hear it without being too loud. And if they want to turn it up around the kitchen or turn it down, they can do. So we'll show you how that works in just a minute when it, we start to get a few cables in and get it up. But it is very simple for this sort of system to put together. Right, picking back up where we left off. So I've just got this set up now, just so you can actually see how we're going to do it once it goes install, gets installed on the tray. So we've got four core cable. We're going to use the four core cable to send the signal up from the amplifier to the sub. So we've got left and right here, for example, that's coming through here. And then we've got two inputs at the top, left and right in. And then what we're gonna do for each one of these speakers, we're gonna set them on the outputs and each one of them is gonna come out the crossover and that will take out all the bass and leave the mid top coming through here and that will go to the speakers. Now this is quite a good little system. We've used it a few times. It's, it's better than what a lot of people fit and we, we pride ourselves on fitting decent stuff to be fair. Uh, this is EV Electro Voice pretty decent brand uh, the system's rated at about 200 watt on this particular model so you've got the sub and the tops as well and we're using a 200 watt amplifier so it's matched up pretty well it is loud for a, a little bar uh, we've got one over at the smoke bloke over in the Neaton we've also got some Martin audio speakers around the bar there as well using that using the sub with the Martin audio speakers and the UV speakers as well works really well 
Uh, if you like your music, you turn it up at night and it absolutely bangs to be fair. But anyway, getting back to it. So we're gonna get the, we're gonna test this out now, make sure it's all working, make sure the kit's working before we install it. Then we're gonna go around putting some speakers up, getting the sub up over here somewhere and then another one over there. And then Rich is gonna start cabling it in four core to the subs and then two core to the speakers. Uh, nice and simple and we'll show you what it looks like in a little bit. Just checking back in then. So we tested the speakers, it's all working. We had a bit of music on in the background. We're gonna work out where to put that. But originally we were gonna mount the speakers like this here. So you can see, sitting underneath the tray on the bracket. But with the bracket that comes with it, it hasn't quite got enough angle to twist it up. So we were just gonna play around with it now and see if we can get the speakers to sit on the side of the tray, which Rich is just gonna try there. A bit like this, imagine this is a tray. We've just mopped one up here. So imagine that's the side of the tray. So the speaker sort of sits on here like, trying to show you, do one-handed, sort of like that. So it sits on the tray and it can be swiveled around and moved around, whatever. So we're just gonna mark that one up now and see what that looks like. But because the ceilings are quite high, normally we'd have them at a lesser angle, but it might not work out too bad having them pointed down because we're gonna have so many speakers in here, it might try and counteract some of the echo in here. Uh, there is going to be some things on the walls to dampen down the sound anyway to reduce the, the noise in here because it's going to be quite noisy with the kitchen in here anyway. But if we could maybe position the speakers like that, that might work out better than having them the other way, pointing up. So we're just going to put the other ones up now and see what it looks like. And then we'll put a bit of a comparison as to work out how it's going to work out for the best. We might end up putting them all in one way and taking them all out a later date and changing them around and see how we get on. But we'll get them in for now and then we'll see what it looks like in a minute. Right, okay, so we decided, after much deliberation on how we're going to do this, uh, we're going to go for the speakers hanging like that. It's going to help reduce the echoes and some of the vibration and everything else for sound bouncing back. So hopefully that should work out okay. Could always change it if not, but I'm pretty confident it's going to work out nice. Got another bracket installed on there. Richard's going to got these little M5 uh, little nuts and washers, some bolts, just bolting that into the tray. That's working out quite nicely. So we've just been working out how we're going to mount the subs because we want to get the subs out of the way. There's not much room in here to have it in cabinets or anything like that. So what we're going to try and do is get the speaker, because each system, each four speakers need a sub. So we're going to have a sub sitting on that purlin along there. So it's going to sit up. You'll see what we mean when we make the brackets for it. We're going to have to come up with something for that. So it sits on the wood and don't vibrate. But yeah, so far so good. It's looking good, Rich, isn't it? It's exciting. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> Right, okay, just back. Rich has been cracking on getting the speakers up. They're looking pretty good. Let me move my hand out of the way so we can see. They're very good. They're looking pretty damn sexy, to be fair. Uh, so, we'll come up with a bit of a plan for this. We're good. We've just turned the speaker upside down and then we've got this threaded bar from uh, Tool Station. So, the plan is, we'll chop this bar down and then we're gonna fix, I've got, I need, they're only one meter length, so. I guess if we can get, maybe if we can get two out of them, it'll be good. But rough plan anyway, cut this bar down. So we're gonna fix this bar in two positions into the actual cab. So we're gonna use some, a couple of uh, inch tent screws, probably about four or five of them, just across there to hold it nice and steady. The cab's not too heavy, the weight is on the bottom anyway. But we're gonna do this twice so it's staggered across. And that whole speaker is gonna flip round, like so, and then the T is gonna sit then that threaded bar is going to screw into the top of there so the speaker sits flat up against the tilt on the wall one on the roof I should say and then let's say we just put a few screws and hold it in place and then we've got a couple of L brackets which are around somewhere which are probably lost put down somewhere uh, but the idea of them is once, once the speaker actually goes up on the wall on the opposite side of it we'll just put a little bracket on there to hold it up in place you'll see what we mean in a minute when we get it up we'll start cutting it down and we'll show you how we're gonna fix it up to the top. All right, Rich, tell us what we've done. We've um, butchered the speaker. <laughs> Pretty much ruined it. It's gotta go this way now. Uh, so we've just, we've cut these bars down as I was trying to explain, and we screwed them in. Rich said to do it by hand, but I'm more of a cowboy and just like to good it in with a gun. Uh, but it's worked out all right anyway. So we're gonna flip this over, and then we'll put- You think it's worked out? It's right? gonna work out all right, Rich. Don't worry, I'm a professional. 
<laughs> so, uh, butcher. John the Butcher. We're going to put a bracket on here. We can do, we're probably just going to do two, or we could probably do one if in the middle, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Just do you want to do two? Two. Two for safety. So, we're going to do the same again. Screw that in there, screw that in there, and then that's going to turn around and then sit on top of that purling. And it'll all come together, and the cable's going to come in the side as well. So, we'll just get this up, and then we'll, you should be able to see it up on there in a minute if we don't drop it. And we should be good. Okay, so I think it's looking all right. It's taking looking all right. It's worked out quite well, to be fair, Rich, hasn't it? You can't really see. It's a bit of a bad angle down here, but if you imagine when it's all done, we want it stealth. There's the speaker just sitting up there. It tucked away quite nicely. We're just getting the wiring into it now, as you've seen in the time lapse, just bringing that through. But we're going to get some black paint and get the uh, brackets touched up, like you can see up there, just to get them hidden away a little bit. Uh, but we're just cabling it up now. So, like I said, how this one works, we haven't got a separate crossover, it's built into the sub. So it's a stereo crossover in the sub. We're running the four core from there, left and right channel, into this sub. And that's going to do four speakers, so two that side, two that side. I'll show you the back of it, how we're wiring it now. We've just got some ferrules ready, which is stripping it all back. But they terminate into these little green connectors, standard audio connectors. Do you want the ferrules, Rich? Have you got a ferrule? Or do you want any crimp as well? I need it. I mean, you've got these little crimpers. So yeah, so there's your sub, there's your connections on the back. You get your inputs and your outputs. So we're just wiring these in now. There's a cover to go over that, but we're going to swoop the cables down around the top of here and it'll go in the bottom looking nice and neat. So that's pretty much it. And then we're going to repeat the process on the other side. Uh, the only other thing at the minute is we haven't sorted out is the, where the amp's going to go. I'll show you inside this cupboard just quickly. So as I said earlier, Richard's got the armour in the other day, it's not terminated yet, so we're waiting for three phases to be put into the building. But this is pretty much an idea of how it's gonna look inside this cupboard. I think we're gonna move this over to the other side. We put that in originally just so they could build the case around it, but we're gonna move the power and, and the board around. But the amplifier is gonna sit somewhere in here. There's gonna be a fire alarm panel and a switch grid up here. And we're gonna mount the amp vertically on the little rack. So it'll just slot in here, so you can just change the volume settings or whatever you need to do inside this cupboard. So that's the plan at the minute of where it's going. So we've got the cables there ready to go. We've only got some temporary power on at the minute with the board, uh, which made up, made up the other day, which I should show you actually. So it's just in here, single phase supplies from there at the minute. We've had to put it into our temporary board. We've got some handy blocks down there, just a Hager board. And we've got a couple of uh, normal sockets and a 16 amp connector on there, powering our lead sockets that we have always made up, you know, just for temporary power on site. It's really handy to have actually. They're just down there and we've got a couple of wise players. So they're doing that, they're on a 16 amp breaker. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna try and get this one up and running. While Rich, me and Rich terminate the rest of this with the ferrules, we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And then hopefully we can give a little try with the amp plugged in, make sure everything's working. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next one then, which is gonna go up that side now. We've changed the mind, it's going up there. So yeah, catch in just a little bit. Right, okay, we're just wrapping up. We've had a bit of a mess around and a change of, change of minds on how it was looking. These worked fine where they were before, underneath. And we've changed them to they're on the side now because it didn't work when it comes around here. It just didn't get the right angle and we didn't get the right throw. If it was like another 10 degrees, me and Rich were saying, it'd probably get it right. But now we've changed them so they're sitting on the side. I think they look just as neat. And it gives us a better angle here. So that's all set up now. We've got the speaker up there. I tell you what, it sounds really good. We've just let it run in. The sub goes really low for a little tiny system. Uh, we still got the other one to do. We need a bigger steps to get up there because we haven't got the lift here anymore. So we're going to bring the big ones back on Monday with a couple of triple sets and get them up there. Uh, but this side's all in and it's sounding pretty damn good, to be fair. Nice and discreet. It's going to look really nice when the, uh, all the light fittings are up. I think we're all right, stuff on my phone. I don't know which way around we are now. There we go. I'll edit that bit out. This is why my phone's always breaking. But we'll, uh, yeah, we'll catch you back up here Monday. We've got everything prepped. 
We've got the speaker all made up for the other side as well. Uh, and then we'll just carry on from now on Monday when we're all back. So we'll catch you on the next little video and we'll see you in a bit.